Good morning. Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. How are we doing this morning? I hope everybody has survived the weather and uh, the things are starting to calm down a little bit today in California. We have had our share of wind. We've had no rain, but we've had lots and lots of wind. And none of our roads caved in. And none of our roads caved yeah, in. Yeah, you guys have really been through it. We hope you've been safe and sound. We've been praying for you. So let's talk about last week's lesson. Julia, tell us about it. Well, last week's lesson, we talked about Jesus choosing the 12 disciples. Yes. And he did that. He had lots of reasons why he did that. Um, one of them, we know them by because we read their books. Some of them. Some of them. Who wrote the books. Gospels, for sure. Um, but Jesus wanted to be friends with them. Yeah, he, that was an important thing. He, he wanted, wanted to be a friend and teacher. He want and he did, and he wanted um, he wanted to be their friend as much. He also wanted them to be his friend, and he he wanted to teach them. He wanted to help them get started out on their ministries, which he knew they would go out on when he left this earth and went to heaven. And this week, we're going to study about. Anger, mm -hmm. and we're going to see where mm -hmm. Jesus gets angry, mm -hmm. and it's called a righteous anger. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're we'll talk about that because just getting angry for the sake of getting angry is not a good thing. And there are many examples in the Bible of righteous anger. We see it in the Old Testament with God expressing anger. Yes, he a number of times became angry. Mm -hmm with the Jews that he brought out of Egypt and because they would not stay faithful. And eventually, uh, they sinned so much against God that they spent 40 years in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And the reason they spent 40 years is that the majority of those who originally left Egypt were not allowed in the Promised Land because of their sins against God, which brought his anger and punishment. But today, we're going to talk about Jesus and how he became angry. But his anger was expressed in a way to teach people mm -hmm. and to encourage them to turn back to God. Mm -hmm. And that is what we call righteous anger. Mm -hmm. We're also going to see where the importance of the temple changes. Because in John 21, we're going to study a little bit where Jesus says, basically, that he is the temple of God. And he made the comment, if you tear it down, we will rebuild it in three days. Which is exactly what he did when he was resurrected from the grave. So all of that change towards the temple allows us to be able to worship God anywhere, anytime that we want to. And so it's an important change in uh, the religious attitude of the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So would you lead us in prayer? I will. I will. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for having us together today. We thank you for the technology to be able to connect with our kids and with others. Maybe some of those people that are watching we've never even met, Lord. So we ask that you steady us and you make us good teachers, Lord. And we ask that those who are listening today, we hope that they will feel your love and your lessons and that you will make them to be good learners even where their teachers may make mistakes. So we give great thanks to you, Lord, and we look forward to returning to a time when we can be in church, but we know that until we can be in the building, we know that we're with you, and that's where church is, Lord. And so we ask that you would teach us well, and we ask this in Jesus' name, and we say, Amen. Amen. So let's start with the scripture readings. Where do you right. start this time? I'm okay. going to start this time. Okay. We're going to start in Matthew 21, verses 12 through 17. And just as a note, 
we will be repeating the same scripture from book to book. They're written a little different, but the overall theme is the same. So we're not just repeating ourselves. We're showing the harmony of the gospel mm -hmm. and the continuity within the Bible and of this particular event. So starting in verse 12, Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them at the temple. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law, the learned ones, saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to son of David, they were indignant meaning they were angry. They were angry. Not righteous anger. Do you hear what these children are saying? And they asked him, Yes, replied Jesus. Have you ever, never read from the lips of children and infants? Your Lord have called forth your praise. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. So now we're going to read from Mark, chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those who were selling doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, it is not is it not written, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him, and because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. And when the evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. Now, continuing in Luke, uh, chapter 19, verses 45 through 48, we're going to see uh, the same story, but written a little differently. When Jesus entered the temple courts, he began to drive out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching at the temple, but the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him. Yet they could not find any way to do it because all the people hung on his every word. And in John 2, 12, I'm sorry, John 2, 13 through 16, when it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and in the temple courts he found people selling cattle and sheep and doves, and others sitting at the tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. By doing all this selling of animals and money, one, the people that were doing the selling were charging exceptionally high prices. The temple... Uh, priests were taking a cut of the money for themselves, so they were making money for it, from it, and uh, that was never the intention. When the uh, and it, when you read in the Old Testament, 
the rules for making sacrifice was not to make the priests rich, but that's where it was at this time. And they were taking these animals into church. So imagine going to church and having a cow standing next to you. And what do cows do? Well, they make a mess. Well, they make a mess. And, and so uh, this isn't having your puppy sitting nicely quiet next to you no, in church. No, this is goats and not yeah. pigs because they didn't believe in pigs. Right. But they had goats and they had sheep and they had cattle. And those animals, by nature, are messy. They're messy. They're messy. So they were disgracing the temple. Because at this point, this is where you went to worship God. Yeah, of course. The Jewish people went to the temple in Jerusalem to worship God. All right. So now we get to questions. I like asking questions. questions. You would like me to ask the questions now? No, no, no. You have to answer. I get to ask. That's because I have more words than you do. You have more words, but I'm older. That's why I get to ask the questions. Okay, ask the question. Right. What did the temple officials start doing in the temple to make money? Well, they started selling the animals like we just talked about. And selling animals in and of itself is not a sin. And perhaps selling animals in a church building would not be a sin. Of course, you would want to make sure you had permission and were keeping everything clean. That in and of itself was not a sin. Buying things is not a sin. Buying and selling animals for the reasons that they were selling, that's not a sin either. But selling animals for this purpose within the temple, within the church, was inappropriate. The temple was built to worship in. The temple was to where you go and you leave your work behind you and you leave your burdens behind you and you're there to worship with other believers the God in heaven that you that created you. It was it was not meant to go and set up a flea market. And remember, the Jewish people at this time believed that God resided in the inner temple. Right. That's where he was, that he lived there. And the priest, you know, the head priest would only go in there once a year for atonement of sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it was very serious. And we brought all these animals in there, and that was the facing the temple. Question two What did Jesus, where did Jesus celebrate the Passover? He celebrated in Jerusalem. And he would have celebrated in a temple, likely. So kind of, let's think about this. Let's think about, you go to a baseball game, okay? And the baseball game is going on. You've got the people in the crowds. You've got the guys in their uniforms. You've got the coaches and the, the referees. And they have and, great green fields. they got great, right, think about that. Beautiful, flat green fields. Probably not a lot of bugs, no snakes for sure. Absolutely. Right. Okay, so what... But you want to go on a picnic. Would it be okay to just bring your picnic and your blanket and come down right there behind, right in center field, right behind where the pitcher is, lay your blanket out, set your picnic up, and sit there and watch? Would that be okay? I don't think so. No, because why? Why? Well, because it would interfere with all the the activity of the baseball game. You it, give you give good answers. Yeah, sometimes. The the. Baseball field was is meant for people to play baseball on and for people to be able to watch them play baseball. Just as the a baseball field was not intended for people to come and picnic on, now, at least during the middle of the game, anyway. Um, a temple is not intended for the use that the people who were buying and selling were doing. Absolutely. Okay, question three. With what kind of anger did Jesus use to drive out the animals and shopkeepers? Well, you described it. I think you said you, that this was righteous anger. That, um, but, but let's think about that one a little bit more, too. So Jesus went in, and he turned over tables, and he threw money on the floor, and he swatted the cows out of the, out of the temple. Right? He was physical, right? Yes. So... Does that mean that if somebody cuts in front of me in line at the grocery store, I should just push them out of line? 
I don't think so. I think that might be a different deal. I think you're right because I think what I'm doing is worse than what the person who got in front of me is doing. And in fact, the person who got in front of me may well have gotten in front of me on accident. Well, there's a verse in the Bible that says, uh, your anger is okay, and I'm paraphrasing, but you are not to sin. So becoming wow. anger does not give you the right to belittle or berate another person or another situation. Anger can be used the way Christ used it to guide people back to a relationship with God. So when you use anger and you think about your words and you think about your actions to guide people back to Christ, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But to use anger just to show you're right and they're wrong, that's a bad thing. So, do any of you know what, right, what scripture verse that is that he was talking about? This is Ephesians 4.26. And I like to try and memorize scriptures. I'm not super good at it, but I try. And I like to have them in my heart, even if I can't say them out loud when somebody asks me, like as if I'm being quizzed. Because we want to carry those in our heart. And this one is a really good one to carry in your heart. Ephesians 4, 26 says, Be angry and do not sin. So there will be times that you will be angry. And there will be times that being angry is right. It, yeah. it's, you, it is the emotion that we're given by God when we see something that's going wrong. But we're warned, don't sin. Just because somebody's doing something wrong doesn't make you you doing something wrong. We have to be careful right. how we respond. That's right. To that. That's right. And we have to choose our words carefully. And before we do anything, we should always pray to God. That's and right. And ask Him for guidance in how to handle that situation. Right. And I'm pretty sure God wouldn't tell me in the grocery store to just push somebody. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Okay. What's the next question? Next question. Number four. Jesus said the merchants had changed the temple into what? A den of thieves. Again, the priests of the temple yeah. were making money off all this activity going on, whether it was the exchange of money, mm -hmm. because you talk about exchange of money, people from many different lands would come to the temple at this time to worship. Mm -hmm. So they had different currency, just like if you go to Mexico, they have the peso, we have right. the dollar. So, uh, But we're not supposed to make everything about making a profit. We are supposed to come together in our church building. Even today, we come together to worship and celebrate God. So... How did the people react to Jesus' actions in the temple? Well, one, they were surprised. They were surprised. And the temple priest became angry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they saw, they wanted to know what authority Jesus had to do what he did. Right. They were surprised. And I think, I think anytime somebody tells us that we've done something wrong, I mean, Jesus very clearly said to them they did something wrong. He was not pleased. And I think anytime that that happens, it can take us by surprise, and it might be something we don't want to accept. But it's good when you get some, some comment from a person that you think about it, that you ask God about it, that you you make sure that they're not right. Or that maybe they are right. Maybe and what they is are it right. that you need to do? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. Now, what Jesus wanted was the temple to be what it was supposed to be, a mm -hmm. place of worship. Mm -hmm. And that's why he had this righteous anger. And he called out those who were uh, the... the uh, Defacing, yeah, discrediting, 
destroying the, what the meaning of the temple was and why people came there to worship. And through, when we're, when we're told we've done something wrong or we're doing something wrong, it's, it's the best response is to, is to be prayerful, to study our Bibles, to see if we can determine if we have done something wrong, and to ask God to help us understand and help us know how we can correct that. And you know he will respond. Yes, he will. Who became upset when they saw Jesus healing people in the temple? People became upset because he was healing other people. This is, I mean, that's kind just, of, kind that's of just strange. weird, right? Yeah. But it was the priests and the scribes. They were upset um, to see that Jesus came in and he turned over the tables and he then turned around and he healed other people. He gave a positive message and people responded. Yeah. And the priests, I think, probably felt intimidated and threatened by here is a, quote, unlearned man who also knew more than anybody else in the world ever knew. Uh, but they didn't know that. Right. Uh, but he came forth as a son of a carpenter, just a layman. And he was able to do wonderful miracles. Mm -hmm. And all of this was done to turn people back to God. That was Jesus' total motivation. That was his mission, was to turn people back to God. So he disrupted what they were doing, put a stop to it, and said, we're not going to have that. And then he immediately turned and used space, used the temple for what it was intended. Yeah. Prayer and worship of our Creator. So a big takeaway is that righteous anger is okay, but we have to be careful how we use it, Correct. when we allow it, right. and make sure our motivations are to help people, yes. not hurt people or not show people uh, that they're wrong about something and we're right about it. It's not to gloat. It is to be a humbling experience for us as we try to turn people back to Christ. And Christ ultimately makes leads the people. We just provide a message. And our message should always be one of encouragement, no matter what they're doing. We should encourage, incorrect, but mostly encourage. And then we put it in God's hands and allow him to do his work in the particular situation, whatever that may be. This is a good lesson. This We see a different side of Jesus. Yeah. And we hope that we're going to learn from it. Right. Uh, well, we're going to end the lesson there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to continue uh, studying about Jesus. And uh, now we'll go to our closing prayer. And uh, I'll lead us in that prayer. Thank you. And, uh, we just, we're just grateful for the opportunity to spend time with you. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today's lessons. We thank you for taking the opportunity to teach us. Just want to open our hearts, open our minds, and learn how you want us to live. You've pointed us in some uh, certain directions in our life. You've given us great opportunities. Even today, with all the negative things that are happening in our country, with a pandemic, with uh, just having to stay at home, having uh, so many restrictions put on our lives right now. But the positive side of that is we have more time to worship you and study your word. And I would just encourage every one of you, what f extra free time you have, since you can't get out as much as you normally do, spend some of that time mm -hmm. in worship and study of the Lord. It will make you a better person. It will please God to no end because he loves us. 
and loves especially children. And we just, uh, we're just so grateful for all that he does. These things we ask in his precious name. Amen. Amen. Have a good week. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.